Hi everyone, got something a little bit different for you today on this week's adventure. So you've seen me obviously sleep in various SUVs. This channel is called SUVRVing. That's mostly what it's about. But more than that, it's about adventure in general. And so I've gone backpacking and kayak camping and bicycle touring, but I've never gone on a multi-day electric scooter ride. And that's what I'm doing in this video with this scooter behind me here. This is the Varla Eagle One electric scooter and it's a beast. It's a, it's an all-terrain scooter. It is a 40 mile an hour scooter. It's basically a, a motorcycle, but in scooter form. Pretty cool thing. Varla emailed me and asked if I would be interested in making a video about the scooter. I think they had in mind something along the lines of a review or like an unboxing or something, but I, you know, that's not really, doesn't really fit with my channel, it doesn't really make sense on this channel. So I thought, okay, how about I take it on a two-day ride? I'll do the same kinds of things that I normally do, see interesting things, talk about some interesting little pieces of history that you probably aren't aware about. I'll just do it on a scooter instead of in an SUV. So that's what this video is all about. I am in Salt Lake City. It is a hazy but warm December day. It's actually December 1st. You're gonna be seeing this pretty quick after I film it. You can see a little bit of downtown Salt Lake over there. I'm starting off the adventure at the cemetery here because I wanted to see and show you guys this. The grave of Lily E. Gray, victim of the beast 666. Pretty unique grave here. Now, no one knows exactly what this means. As far as I can tell, there's no record of, of what exactly they meant by victim of the beast 666. But that is interesting, isn't it? And so I wanted to start this journey in the cemetery here because I like it. I used to live in this area. I used to live in this neighborhood. This area is called the Avenues. It's a neighborhood of Salt Lake City. I lived here for a year with a buddy of mine after we graduated from college. So I have good memories of this area. I used to come to the cemetery several times a week just to walk and ponder and contemplate I've always found cemeteries to be relaxing, pleasant places, good places for reflection. And so I wanted to start off this trip here at the old stomping grounds. The plan is to ride this scooter 50 miles today and tomorrow. About half today, about half tomorrow. I've never done anything like this before, so it should be really interesting. I don't know anyone who has done anything like this before. I have a backpack on my back full of gear I'm gonna need. This scooter can go 40 miles an hour and it does have a range of 40 miles under ideal conditions. I'm not gonna be going that fast on this trip because I am optimizing for distance rather than speed. So the scooter has several different speed modes. I'm in speed mode one right now. And so I'm gonna be maxing out at about 16 miles an hour on flat ground, which is nice. I mean, that's a, that's a pleasant speed, not too fast, but fast enough to feel like you're actually getting somewhere. I'll be talking more about the scooter and about its features and some stats and everything like that as we go on through this trip here. Speaking of old stomping grounds, this is the apartment building I used to live in and fittingly enough, there's a rental scooter, an electric rental scooter out in front. That's kind of fun. And from here, you can see the top of the Utah State Capitol building. And that's where we're headed. To my left here, that's a Smith's. Just basically kitty corner to the apartment complex I used to live in. It's a grocery store. It's a chain of grocery stores in Utah. My friend and I, several times a week, we'd go, uh, now, we didn't have much money, and so we'd go to the grocery store at like 6 or 7 at night, 8 o'clock, toward the end of the day, when they would mark down things like pre-made sandwiches, 
or soups. They'd be half price or something like that. And so it was great for a couple of starving post-college students. It was a convenient and cheap way to, to eat. And at the end of the road here, the end of our street, there's a little park we used to visit and there are incredible views from the park. Yeah, here we go. Let's get up onto the sidewalk here. Park the scooter. Turn it off. Let's walk up these steps. So here we have this pretty little park with just fantastic views of several things, including the Capitol building. And then this down here is City Creek Canyon. The creek down there is City Creek. This leads back up into the into the mountains here. There's a you know there's a walking path and a bike path and, and a road. You can drive back into the mountains for several miles this way. Looking to the left, we've got a little bit of a view of downtown Salt Lake. Then looking to the right, this round little knoll right here in the middle there. It's called Ensign Peak. That is where Brigham Young, who of course was the, the leader of the Mormons who brought them westward to settle here in Utah in the Salt Lake Valley, he and several of the other leaders, as soon as they arrived in the valley in 1847, hiked up to the top of that hill to survey this area what would later become Salt Lake City. And uh, yeah, beautiful view, beautiful day. It's a surprisingly warm December day here. It's about 50 degrees or in the high 40s right now. There's one other interesting thing about this park. So you can see the circle here and then these, these little stones around the perimeter of the circle. There used to be a tower here, a lookout tower. It was called Anderson Tower. Here's a picture of what it looked like. It was made out of granite. It was a few stories tall. It was around for about 50 years. And it was built by this guy, Anderson, as a tourist attraction. Because back in the day, of course, this apartment building wouldn't have been here. So you would have had great views of the, of the Salt Lake Temple in downtown Salt Lake over this way. So the guy built the tower here. This is where it used to be. These are some of the, I guess, foundation stones of, of the tower. He built it here as a tourist attraction, but it never really took off. And so eventually it was dismantled. And speaking of downtown Salt Lake, let's get back on the scooter and head down in that direction. So this scooter has full suspension. It has independent front and rear suspension, which is just fantastic. I actually already have an electric scooter. It's called the High Boy S2 Pro. It's like a $500 uh, commuter scooter. No front suspension, pretty lightweight. This thing is heavy, it weighs 77 pounds. My other one is lightweight and certainly not meant for off-road use. But this thing just eats up the bumps. It's fantastic. All right, this street here is called North Temple. And it's one of the main east-west running streets through Salt Lake City. It runs along the, the north side of Temple Square. And it's called Temple Square because of the Salt Lake City LDS Temple, or Mormon Temple, which is right there. Here's a better look at the temple. It doesn't look like much right now. It's undergoing, I think, some kind of seismic retrofitting or restoration, something to make it more, uh, more resilient against earthquakes. So it doesn't look all that impressive right now, but it's, I think it's probably the most beautiful, or at least one of the most beautiful 19th century buildings in the Western US. I'll put a picture of it in its in all of its glory and its prime here on the screen so you can see what it looks like under normal conditions. But uh, yeah, it took something like 40 or 50 years to build. I think about 40 years to build. 
was completed in the late 1800s. And I'm going to continue going west. I'm not going to spend a lot of time in the city. Okay, right here is the next thing that I wanted to see and show you guys. Looks like it's locked right now. That's a bummer. So if you couldn't tell, I'm switching between the GoPro on my chest here in my main camera. And I'm in front of some building that, um, the sign here says Utah State Fair Park. So I'm guessing this building has something to do with the, the Utah State Fair. And behind the gates, the closed gates right here in front of the building, there's a marker, a stone marker monument to the Donner Party. Now, if you know your, your westward American migration history, you'll know that the Donner Party was an ill-fated wagon train party that left from Missouri in 1846. Uh, they left late in the season, too late in the season. They were going west to California. They took a, a variation to the standard California trail called the Hastings Cutoff, and that brought them through the Wasatch Mountains, which are the main mountain range alongside Salt Lake City here, and out through Immigration Canyon, which I think is this canyon right here that you can see just, just past downtown Salt Lake. That's where the, uh, the Donner Party came out. That's also the canyon that the, the Mormon pioneers came out of a year later in 1847. So the Donner Party came this way toward California through the Great Salt Lake Desert. And they had just a really difficult and miserable time uh, even before they got to the Sierra Nevada Mountains in California, which is where they were met by snowstorms. They were forced to spend a winter up in the high mountains. A lot of them died. They were forced to resort to cannibalization, just a horrible, uh, you know, horrible event, but a, a famous one in the history of the, the westward migration. And so this monument here is a monument to them because they came by here. They came through here on their way to California. And I'm actually partway through listening to an audiobook called The Indifferent Stars Above. Great book so far about the history of the Donner Party. So I'll put a link to this, both the audiobook and the book on Amazon if you are interested in reading that. All right, let's head back onto the scooter or hop back onto the scooter head about another mile this way. And that's where things are gonna really get uh, get fun. Oh, I'm already here. That was much less than a mile. That was like a quarter of a mile. So, this right here is the Jordan River. This is the river that flows into the Great Salt Lake, which is this way, from Utah Lake, which is this way, which is a freshwater lake, and uh, a river called the Jordan River connects the two bodies of water. Alongside the Jordan River is what's called the Jordan River Parkway, or the Jordan River Parkway Trail. It is a 60 mile long paved path, bike path, walking path. I think it's also an equestrian path in some places, if not all places. It is the longest paved urban path in the United States. I'm going to be riding the length of it from here to Utah Lake. And I've seen conflicting reports about how long this is. Uh, I've mapped it at about 50 miles. I've read that it's about 60 miles long. Maybe that includes some side trails or side paths. You can combine it with even more trails to make for like a hundred plus mile long journey, I believe. All right. Again, here's another look at the river itself. Here we are on the trail, on the Jordan River Parkway. Gonna ride this for another, I think like 18 or 20 miles today. It follows the river the entire time. Don't think we'll be able to see it the entire time, but I'm really excited. This should be a lot of fun. Ooh, and from this bridge over the train tracks here, 
is a really good look at downtown Salt Lake. So let me show you that really quick. Here's a look at some lovely train tracks in the foreground and then in the background. That's downtown Salt Lake. You can see the, the Capitol building right there. That's downtown. And then just, just beyond downtown, that's Immigration Canyon. Ah, oh, feels nice and scenic now. Just saw a fish jump out of the water along the river here. So this river, the Jordan River, so-called by the way, because it, it kind of mirrors the, the Jordan River in, in Israel and in Palestine. The Jordan River there flows from the freshwater Sea of Galilee into the saltwater Dead Sea. And of course you can read all about those in the Bible. And here it's the same kind of thing. The Jordan River flows between the freshwater Utah Lake and saltwater. Great Salt Lake. And the Jordan River used to be well known for being extremely polluted. I think it's been cleaned up in recent years. I don't think I'd want to drink it, but uh, I did see some kids jump into it and swimming in it earlier this summer, so there's that. So as you might expect for a 50 mile long urban trail, it connects a lot of other smaller trails. and other parks. This park right here being one of those. This park here is called the International Peace Garden. It's made up of a bunch of different little miniature sections, each one given to a different nationality. So this is the, I think this is the Japan section right here. This is the Lebanon one, and there's nothing really here in this section. As I understand it, these are these are given to members of the local community or groups um, of these these nationals in the local community here. Here's Italy. This is German Peace Garden. And so the groups maintain their little their little section here as a space that is meant to represent their homeland. Here's a recreation of a Norwegian Staber, which was a traditional farmhouse. For Switzerland, we have a miniature Matterhorn. For Greece, we have some Hellenistic sculpture and architecture. For China, there's a nice arch with some lions. And I haven't seen a sign for this, a country sign, but I assume this is a, an Olmec head for Mexico. Anyway, there are a bunch of places represented here. Canada there. Vietnam here. There's a miniature Eiffel Tower for France right there. Interesting little park. I feel like I should be playing miniature golf here, but it's fun. And uh, I'm not going to leave the, the Jordan River Parkway here, leave the trail a little bit, head about half a mile away to a really strange thing that I've, I've read about and heard about for a while, but never been to before. So here in this sort of industrial neighborhood, right next to the interstate, is a pyramid. This is the Summum Pyramid. Summum is, as I understand it, a kind of an obscure religious order, an obscure religion that believes in mummification, hence the pyramid. Here's the, here's the scooter over here to give you a sense of scale. So the pyramid is maybe, I don't know, 25 feet high, something like that. And next to the pyramid, there's a quote here. The grand principle of creation is 
Nothing and possibility come in and out of bond, infinite times in a finite moment. Not entirely sure what that means. If you want to learn more, you can go to summum.us slash book, apparently. And then here's a closer look at the pyramid itself. Pretty interesting. I don't know if you can really see, but over the door there, there's a, like an Egyptian motif, some wings. Let me read to you a blurb from the Summum Wikipedia page. That'll, uh, that'll convey the, the idea here better than I can. It's a religion and philosophy that began in 1975 as a result of American citizen Claude Newell's claimed encounter with beings he described as Summa or Summa individuals. According to him, these beings presented him with concepts regarding the nature of creation, concepts that have always existed and are continually reintroduced to humankind by advanced beings who work along the pathways of creation. And again, they draw some of their practices from Egyptian practices, hence the pyramid. And they also practice mummification. You can pay, I think it's $4,000 to have your pet mummified, or sixty dollars or $70,000 if you want to be mummified. The founder of Summum, who died sometime in the last 10 years, he was actually the first person to be mummified under the Summum banner or through some um, practices and I think he's actually he's actually placed inside the pyramid here so I didn't think it really made sense to put an unboxing video on this channel but I still made an unboxing video I filmed an unboxing video and a first ride, first impressions video. I rode some uh, some along the road, and then I did some off-roading with this, some uh, some dirt roads and trails and everything. And I made a new channel to put that video on. It's called E-Ride Guy. I'll put a link to it in the video description if you want to check it out. Uh, I don't expect to update that channel very often. It's just a, a for fun thing that I can update every so often. You know, there's no set schedule. There's nothing nothing serious about it, but I like these things. I like electric scooters. I like e-bikes. I have two electric scooters and one e-bike, and I wanted a place where I can share some, some tips and some adventures. I can film some of my personal electric vehicle adventures, and so if you want to check that out, I'll put a link to that video in the description, and I'll pin it as the top comment. Hello, ducks. Got ducks crossing on the path here. So if you want to see more scooter and e-bike content in the future, go ahead and subscribe to that channel. Okay, so this right here, this little path is a, is a side bike path from the main one which is on the other side of the river over there but i wanted to make a quick little detour to show you this so i mentioned the donner party earlier the ones that got caught in the mountains and resorted to cannibalism and this is related to them also you might recall i said that they took a variation of the california trail called the hastings cutoff and this is a hastings cutoff marker it says Hastings Cutoff, Utah Outlet, parentheses Jordan River, California Trail. It says left camp late this day on account of having to find a good road or pass through the swamps of Utah Outlet. Finally succeeded and encamped on the east bank of Utah Outlet, making five miles. That's from James F. Reed, August 23rd, 1846. And the Donner Party is sometimes called the Donner Reed Party. So this is one of the, the Reeds from that and so this is an actual spot where that party passed by that's what these markers are for i've seen these several times before these kind of i-beam markers with quotes from journal entries of people who who passed this way pretty interesting so we are like that said on the east side of the the utah outlet the outlet of utah lake which again is this way it's now called jordan river but I guess back then they called it Utah Outlet. This area is a weird mix of, of industrial, light industrial, 
office parks, and then nature. Really pretty spots. It's fun, it's fun going from one to the other in, in rapid succession. All right, let's get back in the saddle. Well guys, on this quiet, lonely stretch of Jordan River Parkway, of Jordan River Trail, I've run out of battery. Scooter battery, that is. I think I've gone 28 miles today. I wanted to get another about two and a half. That's where I had, had planned on spending the night tonight, but I'm not there yet. And so I just looked at my phone. There is a motel about a mile away from here that I can walk to. So I'm gonna push the scooter and uh, hoof it to the Econo Lodge, which is uh, not too far away. Should be able to get there in about half an hour. So once I've got all that figured out, I'll update you. Alright guys, that right there is my Econo Lodge. Alright guys, took me about 40 minutes to walk here, <laughs> but I made it. Not a fancy room, but that's about what I was expecting for, I think, $72 a night. There are some nice mountain views here, if you can get past this brick wall. This is Twin Peaks. This is Lone Peak out there. And the scooter is charging. So one cool thing about this scooter is that it has two charging ports. You can buy another charger and you can charge it in half the time. So. With just the one charger, it takes about nine hours, so it'll take overnight to fully charge the scooter back up. And then right by the entrance here is the bathroom area. And that's all there is to it. I'll go over all my gear in the morning and what I have with me, because right now I'm hungry. I plan on getting Indian food tonight, because again, I plan on spending the night a couple miles down the trail. Uh, there is an Indian restaurant about 15 minutes from here by foot, but I don't want to walk anywhere tonight. Now that I'm here, I just want to relax a little bit. So I'm going to order delivery, maybe Chinese, maybe pizza. I haven't decided yet. Probably pizza, let's be honest. It's about five o'clock now and I got started at 1130 today. So been on the move for a while, had a really good time today though. That said, I'm ready for it to be over. I'm ready to be sitting, ready to be in bed, so I'm gonna order some pizza and I'm um, just gonna relax for the rest of the night and I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning, got about nine hours of sleep last night, slept really well. Here's last night's dinner, the pizza, as was foretold. And I've laid out all of the gear here, let's go through it. So I have my backpack, a water bottle, a jacket, uh, like a windproof, waterproof jacket, two fleece jackets, drone, which I don't think I'll be able to use really on this trip because uh, I think I'm mostly in the Salt Lake City International Airport airspace, which is a little bit of a bummer, but I'll try. Toiletries, helmet. This is the Bell Super 3R helmet. I think that's what it's called. Really cool helmet. It's a full face mountain biking helmet and it's really light. But the coolest thing is that this bottom part, like the jaw part, the chin part can be removed and that turns it into just like a, a the top part of the helmet so sunglasses light for filming chargers for my main camera and the gopro gopro 
This is the GoPro Hero 7 Black, and I have an additional five camera batteries with it. Side note, I just ordered the Hero 10 Black, which came out a few weeks ago. I ordered that, and it should be here in a few days. I ordered an additional nine batteries with it, so that should be a good tool to have on my trips in the future. This is the main mount I was using yesterday, the main GoPro mount. This is a chest mount with room for an external microphone. Another lens and a case for the camera I'm currently using, the Canon M6 Mark II. Some other electronics and, and uh, camera things. Two more GoPro mounts. This is just a selfie stick. And then this is, uh, this can actually attach to the front, to the chin part of the helmet. I haven't used it yet, but I have that. Spare battery for my phone, some USB cables, camera batteries and, and SD cards for my cameras. And uh, I think that's it. That's everything. So that all fits inside of the backpack, which is the Osprey Talon 33, or Osprey Talon 33. And then we got the scooter. Again, this is the Varla Eagle One. I'll put a bunch of stats of the scooter up on the screen here. And then I added this, this case to it. And in here is the, the manual for the scooter and a lock. This is just a, a chain lock with a combination on it. And then some, some Allen wrenches in here, a couple uh, multi-tools and then a, a plastic shopping bag. And then I added this. This is a phone mount. This is the one that I used on my e-bike. I took it off to add to the handlebars here. It's not great. It was $8 at Walmart, but it's, it's what I had and it's better than nothing. Back on the trail, back along the river. It's a beautiful morning. It's a little bit cool right now still. It's probably still in the 40s, mid to high 40s. Should warm up to the mid 50s later. Feels good to be back. I'm not gonna be seeing as many things today. There are only, I don't know, three or four things that I, I have to see. It's gonna be largely riding, so this section of the video won't take quite as long, but I am loving this. I'm excited to just get some miles under the wheels here. So I looked at the, at the odometer and I went 27 miles yesterday until it, uh, until it died, until the battery died. I actually might stop at a park or something today and, uh, and charge the scooter up for an hour partway through the ride, just to give myself a little bit of extra safety margin with regards to the battery, but I don't know, we'll see. Check out this octagon house above the trail here. That's pretty cool. I'm now at the first stop of the day. The first thing I wanted to show you guys, it's cold this morning. It's significantly colder than when I started yesterday. I think that'll affect the battery life of the scooter a little bit. It's also windy and the wind is blowing into me as I'm scooting. And I can feel that on the scooter. The scooter's going about one to two miles an hour slower than it was yesterday because the wind is blowing right at me. I might be going uphill slightly more in this section too, I'm not sure, but anyway, I'm at this little monument here. So this was a Native American site that was rediscovered when they were building a road nearby. Each one of these stone monument things commemorates a different tribe, Native American tribe, that called Utah home. At this central pillar sign here. It says, Welcome to Soon Kani, which is the name of this site. And then I think it'll be kind of hard for you to see, but there's a map of Utah here and it, it lists, I think, seven different Native American tribes on here. When this place was excavated, they discovered hearths and projectile points and stone tools and corn and that kind of thing. And it was dated to about 3,000 years old, so fairly old for this area. But these days it's just apartment buildings and mountain views 
and the trail. Check this out, so right along the pathway here is a little farm with some cute little farm animals. Goats. And even some llamas or alpacas over there. And then just over here, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a stop sign up ahead. That's where the trail crosses a road. I'm gonna take a left on that road. I'm gonna leave the trail, hang a left this way, and drive along the road about 1.3 miles in that direction to see the next point of interest for today. But first, here's one last look at the cute little goats here. There is no shoulder on the side of this road. Okay, well that was a harrowing ride along a road with no shoulder. <laughs> Yeesh. That was kind of unpleasant. But this is what I've come to see. So this guy is Orin Porter Rockwell. There's also a picture of him. And he had a hotel on this site in this area. And his hotel also served as a Pony Express station. That's what this marker over here is for says Rockwell Station. It was a station on the Pony Express and Overland stage route from 1858 to 1868. I think the Pony Express was only around for one year in there, but uh, it was a stop on the Overland stage apart from that. And then on the side, here's another nice Pony Express emblem. Pony Express, of course, was the mail route. Short-lived, that was just a series of, of horseback riders running across the country through extremely desolate and hostile terrain. And it was short-lived because the completion of the Transcontinental Telegraph put it out of business pretty quick, but it's pretty famous. And I keep talking about Immigration Canyon. It's the canyon up that way, closer to Salt Lake, where first the Donner Party and then the, the Mormon pioneers came through. And that's also the route that the Pony Express took. So it came out of that canyon and then south through the Salt Lake Valley to here, and then from here further west into the West Desert into very unforgiving and kind of bleak terrain out that way. And my buddy Oren here was a really interesting character. He was a childhood friend and then later on bodyguard of Joseph Smith, who was the, the founder of the, of the LDS Church, of the Mormon Church. He was also a bodyguard for Brigham Young later on. He was a, uh, a famous outlaw hunter and, uh, and like a bounty hunter kind of guy, just really interesting character. I'll put a link to his Wikipedia page down below if you want to read more about him. But now it's time to reverse course, make that sketchy ride back to the trail and keep going south toward Utah Lake. Now this is some off-roading right here. Trying to avoid driving in the road and getting hit by a car. One cool thing about this scooter is that you can go off curbs like I just did right then because of the suspension and the clearance. It's great for that. When spring and summer roll around, I'll take this with me on my trips and do some, some more off-roading stuff with it. I think that's really where this scooter will shine. But for now, I wanted to get a a long, long trip on it. I thought that would be a lot of fun. And so far it has been, this has been so fun. The first time I rode an electric scooter was earlier this year. 
I rode one of the rental ones, like a, a bird or a lime electric scooter. I think it was a bird scooter. And I just had a blast. I felt like a little kid again. It was so much fun. I think in a lot of ways, an electric bike is more practical than a scooter. Just because you have, you know, a, right, uh, a, um, a rack on the back and you can put stuff on that. It's got bigger wheels and everything, but a scooter is just more fun. And if we're talking SUV RVing, a scooter actually is more practical. So I did a video not too long ago about an electric bike and I really like that bike. It's, it's great, but for SUV RVing, it's not so great because it does take up so much space and it is so big and unwieldy even when it's folded up. This scooter weighs like 20 pounds more than that bike, but because it's so much more compact, it's so much easier to, to put in your car. It's much more portable for us SUV RVing types. So if you're looking for an electric vehicle to take with you in an SUV, a scooter is, is a really good option that I think you should take a look at. And it's just a lot of fun. Check this out. We have a couple of tanks. It looks like three tanks. Some sort of armored tractor. And uh, looks like a Vietnam era helicopter. That is pretty cool. Here's the helicopter. And what I thought at first glance was a tank is not a tank. This is some kind of huge gun. Like a, a gun on tracks here with a bulldozer at one end. It's pretty neat. I don't know what this is. I think this is a boat. And then here's the tractor and a couple of tanks. So this is a National Guard camp. This is uh, Fort Williams or Camp Williams. And so they just have these sitting out here in front of the camp. That's really neat. Not the kind of thing you see every day. All right, guys, so I'm getting pretty low on battery power. So I've come to this park. There's a pavilion here with power. I only have about five miles left on the trail on the ride, but there are lots of hills, lots of ups and downs here, and the scooter is really struggling on the ups, going like, you know, five, seven miles an hour. So just to be safe, I didn't want it to die, you know, just a few miles from the end. So just to be safe, I decided to come here. I'll, be, I'll spend, I don't know, an hour, maybe even two hours here, just hanging out. The battery in here is about a thousand watt hours. It's just under, I think it's 900, let me see. Yeah, 946 watt hours. So that means that if you had something like a Jackery Explorer 1000 or any other 1000 watt hour capacity portable power station, you could charge this up with that. Now that big power station could only charge this thing up one time. So you'd, you know, want to make sure you didn't need that power station for anything else. But, you know, it is something to consider. That is an option for you. Okay, back on the trail here, leaving the park, gonna get back on the main trail. I don't think I have any stops between here and the lake, so this really shouldn't take too long. And I also just saw that I have 100 miles on the total odometer for this scooter now. One thing I didn't mention is that this scooter has an optional seat. You can buy an, uh, an extra seat for it if you'd rather sit than stand. I know my, my wife and my mom prefer sitting on the scooters. They've both tried them out. I prefer standing, and so I didn't want to do this entire 50 mile ride sitting. I'll make a video on the E-Ride Guy channel about the seat if you want to see more about that. I'll do that at some point in the future. And then also if there are any other videos about this scooter that you want me to make over there on that other channel, let me know. And then one other thing I wanted to mention is that you see this uh, 
the grip tape here, the skull on fire. You can get different grip tapes for it. Um, when I got the scooter, it came with several, it came with like four different ones. I didn't love any of them. And so I figured I would just leave this one on. This is the one that came with it. But if the burning skull isn't to your taste, there's one that's like graffiti. There's one that's uh, a black kind of distressed American flag. And then there's one that's an attack helicopter. They're all kind of not really my style, but uh, yeah, you can, you could just take this off and replace it with regular grip tape, like skateboard grip tape of, of your choosing if you really wanted to. One more thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that I was actually looking to buy this scooter before Varla even reached out to me. So I was super into looking at scooters online and this guy has a channel named Arcanine Rides. He's done a ton of videos about this scooter and I really wanted to get it. I, I came very close to buying this scooter but thought, you know what, I'm just gonna wait till next year. I already bought one scooter this year, I don't need to buy another. By the way, there's mile marker three, three miles left to go. And then Varla reached out to me. And of course, if you wanna learn more about the scooter, I will put a link to it in the video description. And also I'll pin it as the top comment in the comments down below. Mile one, so I'm one mile away. The voltage on the voltage meter right here is reading low. I have one little bar of battery life left on the on the screen up here, so I'm running on fumes at this point. I think the cold today has definitely affected the battery life too. It's been chilly, it's definitely cooler than yesterday, and that is not great for batteries. I think I'm there. So basically I was aiming for a park called Inlet Park. I think this is the tail end. This is one side of the park right here. Nice. <laughs> what a fun adventure. But seeing as how I have a little bit, a little bit of battery life left as I cruise at five miles an hour, I'm gonna go to the far end of the park. That's where I'm gonna lock up the scooter and then walk to the lake. I don't even know if I'll, oh, I think it just, did it just, yeah. <laughs> what perfect timing. I am a hundred feet from the far end of the park. We made it guys. And the plan here, so I'm gonna go check out the lake and then uh, I'm gonna call my parents. My parents live not too far from here, maybe 20, 25 minutes. Gonna call my parents and have them come rescue me and uh, hope the scooter in their car, drive back up to Salt Lake where I started to get my car and then uh, we'll end the day there. All locked up. Let's go find the lake. And there's actually a hot spring over here that you can take a dip in. It's big enough, it's maintained by the city, I think it's called, I think it's just called Saratoga Hot Spring or Saratoga Springs Hot Spring. I don't think I'll show it to you because, you know, I don't want to film people in a hot spring. That's weird, but just wanted to mention that in case you're in the area and want to check that out. I've heard it's not great. Like it's, it's warm, but it's not super, super hot and also kind of muddy in the bottom. So probably not a top tier, you know, destination spring, but probably worth the dip if you're in the area. And here we have it. We are at the lake. This is Utah Lake. What a beautiful time of day to be out here. The sun is setting. I mean, it's very close to setting now behind me. It's just barely peeking over the mountains still. Shining beautiful light on the, on the Wasatch Range over here. Feels great to have completed a very unique and very fun adventure, and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Thanks for watching, let me know what you think, let me know if you have any questions, and stay tuned. The next series of videos that I have is really interesting. I go east of the Mississippi 
for the first time. So be sure to check back and watch for those videos. Thanks again, I'll see you guys in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.